Let's read it together. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the God fill you with me, be ever so severely, by the sign of tomorrow, I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. By himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had not the Lord, he said, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was a sun bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back the second time. Touched me and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Came to buy that food, he traveled forty days and forty nights until he reached the forever, the mountain of God. Amen. Today I put one of the beautiful poems. You are the tiger burning bright. Deep in the forest of my night, you are the one who keeps me strong in this world. You sleep by the silent cooling streams, down in the darkness of my dreams. All of my life I never knew you were a dream I see come true. You are the tiger burning bright. You are the tiger burning bright. Deep in the forest. Of my night, you are the one who keeps me strong in this world. Let's listen to this music. He ready to. <laughs> Once a month, in the night, 9 p.m., I went to dormitory 
And due to COVID-19, we could not meet each other in the special worship place. That's why I went to the dormitory, the, you know, I used the radio system, and I used, like a junkie gun, I said, 안녕하세요. <laughs> good, good, uh, good night all. Oh, yeah. This is Incheon. 안녕하세요. 반갑습니다. 인천 양인철이에요. And then I you know playing this music. Na, 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 na. And then I introduced uh, dormitory students their personal story. They you know, that time so many students they they said, wow, this is really good. The music touched my heart. Really good. You know, nowadays we need tech rest. We need especially for me. <laughs> We need to take a rest. Last spring semester, I was so stressful, you know, because I was too busy. You know. uh, every Monday, uh, 5 a.m., I woke up early and I drove my car. And I, I taught the, the two classes from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. without rest, you know. So I, I was so tired, but I tried to do my best teaching. And one day, one of my students, he raised his hand, a professor, I want to meet with you personally. And after class, like the Hebrew class, and then uh, we met each other. He, he said, professor, my job is pharmacist. When I, watched, when I saw your face, your face changed dark. <laughs> <laughs> so I was so worried about your hair. I think your liver the situation is not good, and he brought something, medicine. <laughs> he gave him medicine <laughs> because he, he he recognized my health status not look good. Because that time, no no, no taking you know rest, just to keep going, keep studying, keep teaching. You know, every Sunday I teach, I know like a preaching, praising. I like a preaching, praising, but. You know what? Before audiences, somebody just stand up and then preaching, so stressful. Mm -hmm. You know what? You think I'm very extrovert, you know, but every Saturday or Friday is coming, coming, oh, and then Sunday is coming. <laughs> Sunday is coming, and then I have to preach. So stressful. <laughs> and one day, my heart beating. <laughs> very good. And then almost 2 p.m. point, oh, it's time to preach. Oh, without script, how can I say before my audience, my church members? So stressful. But this week, I'm so happy because I decided just taking rest and then like freedom, you know. And when I preach, when I feel freedom, and all of us, all our church members, likewise, you can feel freedom. So. Today, I want to introduce about the, the pictures. These pictures remind me freedom. Oh, it's not right. Um, would you? It's not working. Yeah. <laughs> that time, the uh, 2016, that time I, I had to take my qualifying, qualifying exams for my dissertation. And, I, and after I submit my papers, and I went to Canada, uh, and I think uh, you know Daniel Han, your wife is from Canada, right? And then we went to Canada Bank. This is Lake Louise, and my wife she always said, "I want to go to Canada. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see with my own eyes Lake Louise." And then I went there. What a wonderful! What a beautiful! And that's the picture. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like a, a picture of the art behind me. I did not bring drawings or pictures behind me. Wow, it's really good. I hope everyone, when you come the Sunday, I hope everyone take a rest and release your stress and meet God. This place is the resting place. You know, because we meet God here, it's a really good time to hear. And then today's scripture, I want to tell about the Elijah's story. 
Last Sunday, I introduced about Elijah and Elijah kind of Hebrews. It begins with rain, and Elijah, he, uh, you know, he won victory against the Baal and Asherah prophets, over 450 and then 400 peoples, and he got the victory. You know, wow, the victory! He's so happy. And for the more, would you? Let, yeah. I'm sorry. Why it is not working today? Oh, now it's working. Okay. Oh, and Elijah he ran up, ran ahead of Ahab's chariot. He is like a superman. You know, a superman, the writer. His name is Jerry Sigman, and he was Jewish, a Jewish family. That's why when he read Elijah his story, wow, it gives his inspiration about Superman. So Elijah, he got the mantle, and Elijah, he went and superior power. But the promise today, when he got the victory, suddenly the mood and situation changed. He was afraid of something. What happened to him? So let us know about the meaning of today. First, we can find rest in God's presence. So let us read together. We can find rest in God's presence. Ahab's wife, her name is Jezebel, she planned to kill him. And he is taken from her and arrived at the rodent tree. And let us read the first Kings chapter 19, verses 3 to 4. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. Then he came to Beersheba in Judah. He left his servant there. While he himself on a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that in my God, I have had enough, Lord. He said, Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Elijah, he wanted to escape from Jezebel, Ahab's wife. You know, it's very weird because he got superpower. He won against the Baal and Asherah you know, prophets. Why he had to escape? Because he had no rest. No rest. Just keep beating and keep winning against something. He had no enough time to meet with God personally. And then suddenly, Ahab's, Ahab's wife Jezebel tried to kill him, and he escaped from there. And look at the picture. Down the northern part, northern kingdom of King, and here, the northern part, and here, Beersheba, in the southern part of Judah. You know, Elijah, he was belonged to the northern kingdom of Israel, and he wanted to escape from here and Beersheba. Beersheba belonged to Judah, you know, because he wanted to hide, and he arrived here, he left his servant there, he further escaped from there because he wanted to get, I want to arrive, I want to arrive. So, certain part here, he is desert, he went to their desert, and then he found something, rodent tree. You know, the new, interpret new international, the virgin renders rodent tree as broom bush here. What does it mean, broom bush? The Hebrew word rodent was rendered as broom bush. In Hebrew, ratam means bind. So repeat after me, ratam. 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 It's a Hebrew original word. When God commanded his real life to be silent, it is used, bind your mouth. Ratam means keep silent, just listening to the voice of God. So, under the rodent tree, he kept silent, and he could listen to the voice of God. That time, actually, he wanted to be, you know, I want to I wanna die. I'm more better than my ancestors. But there, under the rodent tree, he could release his stress and he take a rest and he slept. And then I found something interesting. How can I compare rodent tree nowadays? How can I compare rodent tree? This picture, 
Okay. Oh, anyway, let us read it together this one. Ready? Go. The he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. How could a small tree roll a tree? Elijah, he could sleep. I tried to find a very similar blue bush or rodent tree. I found this one. <laughs> the traffic light we were waiting there. Sunshine, summer days. We were not hiding there. Everybody just there. And we could take, take a rest. And the reason why I was stressed. I think rodent tree is here. You know what? Uh, last Sunday, Daniel Hans and family, we met each other and we talked about the situation. And he mentioned that he worked as a pastor for Sebuna Church for four years. Yeah, yeah four years. And he, he, he said, you know, that church spent ministry, the room, what she do, is a very similar to Sebuna Church. <laughs> Basement, right? <laughs> the first time when I came here, I could smell. Stink, you know? It's like so darkness. If you, if you turn off the light, so darkness. Why here, baseball? Small place. I think rodent tree is here. Right? Rodent tree. Under the rodent tree, you can listen to the voice of God. Right? I'm so surprised today. Fanny, now she changed her hairstyle. But anyway, she came here. And she want to listen to the voice of God. I hope everyone comes here someday and meet God under the rodent tree, under the dead of span ministry tree. Hallelujah. And next, I want to say, second, God protects us. I was a captain. <laughs> okay, I'm going to talk to the light. Like, oh, anyway. Let us read together. God protects us. God protects us. God protects us until we go to the kingdom of heaven. And let us read 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 5 to 8. So long, but uh, we, we want to focus on what this word is telling us. So let us read together. Ready? Go. Then he laid down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once, and then touched him. Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over a hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strength to buy the food. He traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached the forest, the mountain of God. Amen. Under the rolling tree, the light at the prophet, he could sleep well. All at once, an angel touched Elijah. And the, but the scripture does not tell us how he, the angel looks like. But Elijah follows his word and, uh, and ate the bread and a jar of water. God gave Elijah his power by giving a daily bread. And when I read verse 6 in Hebrew, I was a very surprised. Before I come to this worship service, Brian, please pray for Brian, Brian got busy this. And what the Hebrew, he wants to know about the, what does the Hebrew word bread in Hebrew means. And he said, Perfect, uh, Pastor, yeah, as I know, Bread, the Hebrew word is lechem. So repeat after me, lechem. Lechem. Lechem means bread. Do you know bed lechem? Bed lechem. Bed lechem. Bed means house. Lechem means bread. So which means the house of bread is bed lechem. Right? But here, the Hebrew word is not lechem. That is uga. Uga. <laughs> what does it mean, Uga? So repeat that for me. Uga. Uga. Uga is a round bread, load of bread. It's baked on leavened bread. It's not delicious. Sometimes it's called as matcha. So repeat that for me. Matcha. Matcha. 
every Passover, Jewish family, they gather together, they eat matzah. Matzah. It's not delicious. <laughs> no. When I was in the U.S. in the 2012, as I remember, my advisor, his name is uh, Marvin Sweeney, he's a Jewish scholar. He invites us, and I came to his house, and he said, let's enjoy and eat the matzah, the Passover the day. And I ate, oh, <laughs> it's not delicious. It's not delicious. But here, the very important point, even if God's nourishment is not delicious, is so helpful for our body. God's food, bread, uga, it could be our financial support, you know, God provides us for financial support. It's not enough sometimes, but it helps. God provides us daily bread and water. So wonderful miracle. Think about we need to find God's little thankful spot. I am thankful for my family. I am very thankful for my workplace. I am very thankful for my friends. Every Sunday I come here, I appreciate my church members. I am very thankful. Think about look around your friends. Very thankful. I appreciate. Thank you. Thank you. In your duty, shoes from Laos. And Duny and Ellen, oh, she, they got the friends. They made a good friendship. When I saw her, and she said, Hi, Ellen, hi. It's like very good, right? We are very thankful, you know? Even though this place is so small, sometimes it's not delicious. You know, we provide you, after our, our worship service, we provide you bread. Sometimes it's not delicious. <laughs> but it's good for us. Sometimes my word, you know, my sermon, oh, but it's really good attitude for you. <laughs> I hope. Another very important viewpoint from the story is that God will protect us until we go to the kingdom of the heavens. Why does God provide Elijah with Uga and water? And let us read the verses uh, 7 to 8. Ready? Go. The angel of the Lord came back second time and touched me in and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. And since he got the food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights. On the beach, he called the mountain of God. God's angel came to Elijah second time and touched, and then let him drink, let him eat second time. Here, the number is very important. 40, number 40. Very, very important. In the book of Genesis, when Noah, the ark of Noah, you know, the raining, how long? Raining, 40 days, 40 nights. And how long, how many years when the Israelites that they were in the wilderness, 40 years. In the book of, in the New Testament, when Jesus Christ, he was tested by the Satan in the wilderness, how many days? 40 days and 40 nights. God provides Elijah food because we know 40 days go to the altar of the mountain of God. No, I think that here, we are living here, this world, it's like we are living here 40 days, 40 nights. We don't know our future, our destiny, when we go to the kingdom of heaven, when we die, we don't know. But God provides us His food for today, until we go to the kingdom of heaven, hallelujah. You know, you think about your situation, it's like 40 days, and 40 nights. Now, Horeb, Horeb, which means, you know, we say the mountain of God, but Horeb, which means dry, dry the place. Dry the place. No nourishment. But here, God provides you 
his food, his water, until we go to the kingdom of heaven. All that requires our holiness from secure life. At the end of holy days, prophets or priests, they can enter into the tent of God or the temple of God. God will provide us his food and water until we go to the kingdom of heaven. My fellows, you and I, we are traveling this world. We need God's resting place. Wherever God is with you, that place is your resting place. God provides you with bread. His bread could not taste good, but with His food and water, we can travel until where, man? Until we go to the kingdom of heaven. God will protect you. Hallelujah. And let us pray this song together. More love to thee.